after doing all of the calculations for forward propagation, we can view it as a computational graph, just like this. We have the output from our first layer. We have the computed for the the linear part of the of the the layer one, which uses the weight and the biases, and then we have the activation function from that linear uh, linear calculation, and then lastly we have the second layer and then we compute the loss. So we can we can view all of the steps in our computation as a computational graph. Now that we want to do the calculations for the backward propagation, which is really what the neural networks uh, neural network learns from. We start by by moving our way from back to the front. So what we want to, our goal is to compute, first of all, this one. But really, we want to calculate uh, the, the, these, uh, these gradients for the weights and the biases. But to get to that point, we need to start at the loss with respect to this node. So what we do is that, first of all, we need to remember that we have a loss for a particular training example, which is the minus log of E raised to Z uh, of the correct label. So our computed for the correct label divided by the sum of class one to capital C. So for all of the classes, E raised to Z of that particular class. And remember here that what well, we have, if we remember the log rules, we have log X over log Y equals log X minus log Y. So if we use that, we have, uh, first of all, minus log of this thing. So minus log of E of Z Y I, and then minus log of the bottom part. But remember that we have a minus log of minus. So we have plus log of the sum C equals one to capital C of all of our classes, e raised to c, uh, z, uh, c. So this is how we can write the loss. And now what we want to compute is the, the derivative of, of the loss. So the, the thing we just wrote here, with respect to z2 and for a particular node k. So we want this arrow. This is what we're trying to compute right now. So we just plug in the values or we just rather we just write the derivative first and then the minus log and uh, we can actually recognize right here that we have log and this is log e log e of e so these two will write just right off the bat, just cancel. So we get minus z of y i. And then we here we have here we have the partial with respect to z k of layer two, and then the log of the sum. And recognize here that we're going to have to do a chain rule first with respect to the log and then with respect to the inner part. So first simplifying a little bit, we see here that this will be zero if yi will not be equal to the node k that we're looking at. So k is a specific, it's just any node of the output and yi is the correct uh, the correct label, so the, the node which is the correct one for this particular training example i. So this will be minus 1 
if y i is equal to k so this notation means that if the, the k is equal to the y i then it will be one and specifically minus one so if we have that for example y i is zero so we have zero and k is one and we have a zero is equal to one which is false so then this entire thing is zero okay so if we move on to the second part we have first the outer derivative with respect to log so we just have one divided by the sum c equal one to capital c of our, all of our classes and then we have the inner derivative so with respect to a sum Now I'm going to, to swap the order of these. So this is minus, this is plus. I'm just going to swap the order. So I'm going to write one divided by C equals one to capital C. And then recognize here that this right here will be a sum. So this will be a sum of E raised to Z one plus e raised to z2, etc., all the way up to capital C. So if we try to be very clear here, and also recognize here that all these z here are specific for this layer. So what we have here is the sum. So if we write out some, just some values to make this clear, somewhere in between these will be the k value and then at the end we will have e raised to c capital C so what will happen here well all of them and remember all of these should also be layer 2 but same for all of them so what will happen here is that well this will cancel and become 0 this will cancel become 0 all others will cancel and become 0 so we have that this right here, this derivative with e to the zk and a partial with zk will be just e zk. So all other will be else, uh, zero, and this one will be e to the zk. So what we have, and we also need to remember this last part, so we have minus one if yi is equal to k. So now we can recognize here too that this part right here is just the softmax. So this is just the softmax that we computed in the forward propagation. And the only thing that we need to add here is that we have minus one if yi equals to k. All right, so what we just computed was really this arrow. But we want to know, well, how should we update our weight so that next iteration should be, should be better for neural network? Well, the w of layer two, we need to take the partial with respect, uh, the derivative of z2 with respect to the derivative of, of the weight so we need to move backwards so we need to move in this direction and remember if we want the derivative of the loss with respect to w then we need to multiplicate those two derivatives by the chain rule okay so what we want now is the derivative of z2 with respect to w of layer 2 and remember that we can write a derivative w2 and z2 will just be let's see it's a1 w2 plus b2 
and this derivative will just be equal to a1 because the derivative with respect to b that will all be just 0 the w with respect to 2 that will be 1's so we will have a1 left okay and then so we've computed this derivative as well now we want to b2 so we want to backwards going to b2 this one will be quite simple b2 that will be similarly as here we'll have the derivative with respect to b2 a1 w2 plus b2 everything will be zero so these will cancel and this la last one will just be an identity matrix since we're doing it's matrix calculus really but it's just one just it's just one right taking derivative of the variable variable with respect to the exact same variable so it's just one one thing to keep in mind here is that the, the biases are local to that speci to those specific nodes and the only thing that we have in the Z2 is that we have we do the computation for a lot of different examples simultaneously so because all of the rows in in the Z2 Z layer 2 are all the examples the images of handwritten digits for example and what we have to do when we when doing the gradient descent part we will we're going to when we update our weights or the biases later on we're going to take with respect to this one right and this one this derivative right here will be of size examples comma features in L2 but the biases are local they're independent of the amount of examples so this will be one comma features features as L2 and we are going to subtract them so, uh, obviously this doesn't work right the dimensions don't match so the thing to keep in mind here is that when having several incoming gradients to one particular node as we have in this case since we have several examples with gradients to a single node then the solution is to add the gradients so that that's one thing to keep in mind when we're actually doing the implementation okay so we've calculated all of these three now we need to move backwards again in the computational graph we're going to from Z2 to A1 so we're going in this direction so we take the derivative of Z let's see derivative Z2 yeah um, Z layer 2 with respect to A1 A layer 1 okay so we have like this and we have let's see we have a1 right w2 and these are the calculations from the forward propagation so we're just moving backwards so we take the derivative of a1 with respect to z2 which is just this part and there's one tricky part here remember that we're not ju just doing uh, normal derivatives per se we're doing matrix derivatives because all of these are matrices and this is a vector so it will be w2 which is exactly what we expect right but there's one tricky part here is that this will be the w2 transpose i won't go into exactly why it's the transpose it's it can be shown quite easily but it would take some time which would distract from the point so this is the this is uh, the derivative so we have moved 
we've just calculated this part and so what we want to do now is that we want to move backwards again we want to calculate this one and this is the last tricky part so we have we want to compute the partial of a1 with respect to z1 well remember that a1 this is just a maximum right because this is the activation function of 0 comma z1 and there's one one part here that's particularly tricky if we have since we're doing derivatives with matrices if we take one if we have an 1 by 1000 and we have some type of function and the output is 1 by 1000 in theory each of the values of this vector could have impacted all of the outputs so what we need to do then is that each of the output needs to be have a derivative of every output so the the derivative of if we call this if we call this capital F and we call this something else let's call it a not to be confused with this a and if we look at the partial of f with respect to a then this will be a 1000 by 1000 vector uh, matrix so that's a lot of numbers um, and the thing about the relu is that it's applied element wise so we know that not every value of the input will impact every value of the output actually it's just a one-to-one -one. The, the first node of our input our first value of our input will will impact exactly the first value of our output because it's applied element wise so not to expand too much on this but we can save a lot on compute by doing by doing the derivative element wise and the reason why we can do it is because the the derivative of this if we know that f is an element wise applied function is that all the uh, the values except the values on the diagonal will be zero and in fact even some values on the diagonal will be exactly zero because the the relu function acts as a gradient router so if it's greater than zero then it's then it's passed with the exact same value if it's negative if z1 is negative then it's set to zero so there's really nothing impacting the the value of the output it's just a router it checks if it's greater than zero then it, lo it lets it pass otherwise it's set to zero so what we can do here when we calculate when we do the implementation is that we can do this calculation element wise instead of doing the complete Jacobi matrix which will save a lot of compute okay so we've done all the tricky parts now uh, let's see we've computed this one this one this one this one and this one and the only thing left is to compute all of these ones which are in essence the exact same computations that we've already computed it will be the exact same just that the numbers from layer 2 will change to layer 1 so that's it for the computation of the backward propagation so in the next video we will see how we can actually use these calculations to implement a neural network from scratch in numpy thank you for watching